On a quiet Tuesday morning, a school janitor named Carl Jenkins unlocked the doors to the gymnasium to begin his daily routine, but he was met with an impossible, almost surreal sight. The flat, polished basketball court he had cleaned just the night before had been deformed. A massive, two-foot-high dome of wood had erupted from the center of the floor, cracking the varnish and distorting the painted lines of the court. There was no sound, no explosion, just this silent, bizarre bulge that had grown out of the ground overnight. He had no idea at that moment, but he was the first witness to a rare and dangerous geological event, a discovery that would soon force the immediate evacuation of the entire school and reveal the powerful, unseen forces that are constantly at work just beneath our feet. But before we start our story, smash that like button, make sure you're subscribed, and hit that notifications bell so you won't miss any of our new, incredible stories. To understand how a gymnasium floor could spontaneously bulge upwards, we must first journey deep underground. Beneath our quiet towns and cities lies a complex, layered world of rock and sediment, a world that is far from static. Deep within these layers, vast pockets of natural gas, primarily methane, can be trapped under immense pressure. This gas is often formed by the decomposition of organic matter over millions of years and can be held in place by a thick, non-porous layer of rock known as caprock. For millennia, these high-pressure gas pockets can lie dormant and completely stable, silent, invisible balloons of immense potential energy. But the Earth is a dynamic planet. Tectonic movements, even minor, barely perceptible earthquakes hundreds of miles away, can send seismic waves through the crust. These waves can be just enough to create tiny, microscopic fractures in the caprock, compromising its integrity. When that happens, the high-pressure gas, seeking the path of least resistance, begins a slow, relentless journey upwards, pushing its way through cracks and fissures towards the surface. And if a large, heavy, immovable object, like a massive granite boulder, the immense, focused pressure begins to push the boulder itself upwards, turning it into a slow-motion, geological piston. It was this powerful, invisible force that was now at work beneath Westbrook Elementary School. Our story's protagonist is Carl Jenkins, the school's head janitor for over 30 years. Carl was a man who knew his building. He knew the sound of every humming boiler, the location of every leaky pipe, and the specific way the old building groaned in the winter wind. His life was one of routine and quiet dedication. On that morning, as he stood in the doorway of the gym, he stared at the huge, unnatural dome in the floor, and his decades of experience told him this was not a simple maintenance issue. This was not the kind of warping caused by a water leak or humidity. The floor had not buckled downwards. It had been pushed upwards from below with incredible uniform force. He cautiously approached the bulge. It was a perfect, smooth dome, rising to a height of nearly two feet at its center. Thin, spiderweb-like cracks radiated outwards from the peak. He placed his hand on the surface. It was firm, solid, and strangely, it seemed to push back against his hand with a faint, almost imperceptible vibration. He immediately called the school principal, Ms. Davis. When she arrived moments later, her confident, administrative demeanor dissolved into the same state of baffled disbelief as Carl's. They were soon joined by the maintenance chief, Frank Torres, a man who had seen every possible structural problem a building could have, but even he had never seen anything like this. Frank, a practical man, thought it might be a collapsed sinkhole that had created a pressure void. But that didn't make sense. A sinkhole would cause the floor to collapse downwards, not bulge upwards. They knew they were completely out of their depth. This was not a problem for a maintenance crew. This was a problem for a specialized engineer. The principal made the call. A few hours later, a structural engineer named Lisa Chen arrived. Lisa was a leading expert in geostructural engineering. As she walked into the gym, her eyes immediately scanned the dome, the cracks, the surrounding structure. She confirmed what Carl had instinctively known. The force was coming from below. But what was it? She and her team began to set up their specialized, non-invasive equipment. They used ground-penetrating radar to see what was hidden beneath the concrete slab of the school's foundation. As the first images appeared on her tablet screen, a new, more alarming picture of the situation began to form. The radar showed the thick concrete foundation, and then, directly beneath the gym, it showed a massive, dense object. It was a granite boulder, the size of a small car, 
that was not part of the original foundation. It was an ancient glacial erratic, a boulder that had been dropped there by the ice sheets thousands of years ago and had been buried when the school was built. But the most terrifying discovery came from another one of her instruments, a highly sensitive gas detector. As she held the sensor near the cracks in the wooden floor, it began to blare with a high-pitched alarm. The readings were dangerously high. The gym was slowly and silently filling with a colorless, odorless, and highly flammable gas. Methane, the invisible force that had pushed a multi-ton boulder up through the earth, was now seeping into the school. The gym had become a potential bomb. Lisa looked up at the principal, her face pale and her expression grim. She gave a single urgent command, evacuate. Evacuate the entire school, right now. The principal's voice came over the school's intercom system, calm and steady, betraying none of the terror she was feeling. She announced that the school would be conducting an unscheduled emergency evacuation drill. The teachers, trained for this exact scenario, immediately and efficiently began to line up their students. Within 10 minutes, the entire school, hundreds of children and staff, had been calmly and safely evacuated to a nearby community center all of them completely unaware that their gymnasium was, at that moment, a high-pressure, ticking time bomb of flammable methane gas. With the school empty, the fire department's hazmat team moved in. They set up powerful ventilation fans to safely clear the explosive gas from the gym, their sensors constantly monitoring the air until the danger of an explosion had passed. With the immediate chemical threat neutralized, the second geological mystery could now be confronted. Lisa Chen and her team, now joined by construction specialists, prepared to cut through the floor. It was a tense and delicate operation. The full, unbelievable sight was revealed. Pushing up from the earth below, directly through a shattered hole in the foundation, was the top of an immense dark granite boulder. It was a monster, a multi-ton behemoth of ancient rock that had been thrust upwards with unimaginable force, lifting the entire floor with it. The investigation now had its what, but it still needed its why. How could a boulder of this size be pushed up through a solid concrete foundation overnight? Lisa Chen and her team of geologists began to piece together the full, incredible story. They correlated their data from the scene with the regional seismic records, and they found it, in the middle of the night before the discovery, a minor low-level earthquake with a magnitude of only 2.4 had occurred deep beneath the region. It was so minor that no one on the surface would have felt it, but it had been just enough to be the trigger. Lisa explained her conclusion to the stunned school officials. The school had been built on a specific geology of layered sedimentary rock. Deep beneath the school, for millions of years, a large pocket of natural methane gas had been trapped under immense pressure sealed in by a layer of non-porous caprock. The minor, overnight earthquake, while weak, had been just strong enough to create a series of microscopic fractures in that ancient caprock, compromising its seal. The high-pressure gas, finally free after eons of containment, began to force its way upwards, seeking the path of least resistance. That path led it directly to the base of the massive granite boulder buried beneath the school. The focused, relentless pressure of the escaping gas, a force of thousands of pounds per square inch, began to push the multi-ton boulder upwards, turning it into a slow-motion, unstoppable piston. It was this geological piston that had shattered the school's foundation and lifted the gym floor, and the reason the floor had formed a perfect, smooth dome instead of simply shattering was due to its modern construction. A gymnasium floor is a sprung floor, designed to be flexible and absorb the impact of running and jumping athletes. It was this very flexibility that had allowed it to stretch and warp over the rising boulder, creating the bizarre, two-foot-high dome that the janitor, Carl, had discovered. The story was complete. A forgotten pocket of ancient gas, released by a tiny, unfelt earthquake, had pushed a prehistoric boulder up through the earth with enough force to lift a building, a perfect and terrifying storm of hidden geological forces. The resolution was a long, difficult, and expensive process. A specialized geological engineering team was brought in. They first had to drill a relief well to safely vent the remaining methane gas from the underground pocket. Then began the monumental task of dealing with the boulder. They had to use heavy-duty hydraulic rock breakers to slowly and carefully demolish the massive stone piece by piece and remove it from the gymnasium. Finally, the shattered foundation had to be repaired, 
and a new gym floor had to be laid. It was months before the school was declared safe and the children could finally return. The story of the bulging gym floor is a powerful reminder of the immense, invisible forces that are constantly at work just beneath the surface of our seemingly solid and stable world. It is a story that proves that the ground we walk on is not always as solid as it seems, and that sometimes the most profound mysteries are not in a distant jungle or at the bottom of the sea, but are waiting silently just a few feet beneath our own familiar floors.